Okay, intro music. Woohoo! All right. And it even fades out. So, hello databases. I wanted to walk you through the process of um, creating a database and putting some data into it. So this is actually going to be how to create the air travel database or a version of the air travel database that we talked about um, earlier in class. Um, we're going to have users, uh, uh, passengers, we're going to have flights, and we're going to have a way to put the passengers on the flights. So the first thing we need to do is get to our PHP my admin server, PHP my admins, the database administration tool we're going to use. Um, in this case, it's running on Euclid, so it's euclid.lab.k.edu slash php my admin. So we punch all that in, bam, we end up here. Now we need to log in, we need a username and password. This is uh, one of the few places at, in, at Knox where you don't type in your email username and password. These are specific MySQL database passwords. Right now, um, the only account we have set up is the CS320 account, and the password for the CS320 account is just CS320. Um, please, you know, you'll have full permission to go in and delete everything. Please don't do that. Um, so we're going to log in. You can see uh, we have permission to the air travel database, the information schema database, and the test database. Uh, these are literally test is just something you put stuff in, you know, to test it out. I actually don't know what information scheme. Oh, this is like, I don't know. I never. These these are just things that are there by default. Air travel is the one we want. This is the new database. Now, what we'd like to do, if we think about our schema, we want to be able to have passengers. We want to be able to have flights, and we want to be able to have passengers on those flights. Um, so, well, what? we need to create a table for passengers and now we get to figure out how many columns want to go in this table now you can always add more columns or delete columns later um, at least until the database gets very very large if you have a database table with 20 million rows in it and you add a new column well all 20 million of those rows have to be updated and if you delete a column same thing so when you're designing the schema you can add and there's no rows yet or only a few rows you can add and remove columns at will, but eventually you want your schema to stabilize and not to change very much, or hopefully not change at all, and then you can just go ahead and uh, populate it with data. So passengers, we know we want the passenger's name, we want to have the primary key, and you know we might want a few other things uh, as well, um, but I'm just going to go with the name and the primary key uh, just to keep things simple. So I'm going to have two columns. So we get this, uh, this uh, pops up. We've got the passengers table. Um, this is what the structure is going to look like. And we just kind of fill this stuff in. I'm going to call this ID for the primary key. I can choose a type. We've got int. We've also got tiny int, small int, medium int, int, and big int. There's like different sizes of ints. Uh, this is one byte. So signed, that would be negative 128 up to 127. Unsigned would be 0 to 255. So it's basically 2 to the 8th possibilities. This is 2 bytes, that's 2 to the 16th possibilities. Medium int is 24 bytes, so 2 to the 24th, about 16 million possibilities. Int is a 32-bit integer, that's 2 to the 32, that's about 4 million possibilities. A big int, I think, is 64 bits, which is just an ungodly number of values. Um, you know, a passenger database, how big does it need to be? Well, a tiny int is certainly wrong. We don't want a database that can only have 255 possible passengers. Um, you could have a plane with more than that many seats on it. Uh, similarly, you know, most airlines like 16,000, uh, sorry, 64,000, 2 to the 16th, that's really not that much. Now, 16 million, that's getting bigger, but, you know, I don't know. There's 330 or so million people in the U.S., 16 million. You know, I could see easily more than 16 million unique people flying. I'm going to go with int because 4 billion is like half the population of the Earth. And I don't think that an individual airline is going to need half the population of the Earth to fly. Maybe they will, but our database certainly won't. So let's go with that. This table here, length slash values, um, for a string, which we'll see in a second, if you put a value in here, it'll be something like how many maximum characters that string can have. 
Uh, for an int, this is actually really weird. The value here would be the number of characters wide you want this to be when it's printed, which, uh, you know, I don't know, is a relic to like running databases with the command line, so I'm just going to leave that blank. Do we want to pick a default value for this? Uh, I'm going to leave it as none. It'll default to the default value of the type, which will be int. We could also set it as null, but since this is also going to be a primary key, those can never be null. And current timestamp would be if you have a um, uh, a date field, you can set it to current timestamp. So, for example, uh, when you first insert uh, like um, a new record of like you know uh, a, a, if you have a database of text messages or something, well, when a message gets sent, you want to log it with the current time, the time at which it was sent, or something like that. But since this is just going to be a primary key, I'm going to leave it as none. Um, and the collation, if it's a character type, you can sort of set what character encoding you want to use. I'm going to leave that blank since this is an int. Attributes, uh, I'm going to list this one as unsigned because we don't want to have negative primary keys. Uh, null, this lets it know, um, is this value allowed to be null or not? I don't want the primary key to be null, so I'm going to leave that blank. Do I want it to be indexed? Yes, I do. The different types of indexes you have available, primary just means it's the primary key. That's obviously the one I want. Uh, unique would mean that this value uh, has to be unique. Um, index means that this value is more quickly searchable. We'll talk more about that. Full text would be, uh, if this is like a field that's not just like a small string, but like a giant string, do we want it to be searchable? There's different things that MySQL can do to make this easier. I'm just going to list this one as primary. Auto increment, if we check this, that means that as new rows get added, it just sort of bumps this number up by one. And, and you can give comments for each table. I don't particularly need to do that. Uh, then up here, ID, we're going to call this name for the character's name. The type we want for that, and the most common types are kind of listed up here, is uh, varchar or varcar. This is a variable length number of characters. Um, I think this is only up to 255, so I'm going to list it as, as up to 255. Um, this is basically a string, but it's sort of a small string. In Java, strings can be as many characters as you have memory for. This is not the case in MySQL. Uh, each uh, column, if it's going to be of a string type, you have to give it kind of a maximum size. This is actually really important because in terms of the implementation, if you know that at most, these names are going to be 255 characters. You can kind of store them right there in the row, whereas if you know that this is set to text, which means it can be up to um, 2 to the 32 different characters or something like that, um, you know, so it could be 4 gigabytes of text, you can't store that in the row. You have to store a pointer to it, which means that your indexing for, like, searching through things is going to be much less efficient. So, um... With strings in MySQL, the general rule is we have to tell it how big the string might be to give hint to MySQL's optimizer so that it knows how it's going to go ahead and optimize things. And then collation, since this is a character type, we need to pick what uh, character encoding to use. I always, just for these, uh, use UTF-8 general uh, CI for character input or something like that. Um, I think you can use anything here. It probably doesn't matter. You can see there's like Esperanto, Danish, Czech, things like that. I just leave it at, at general because we don't tend to store anything particularly, you know, uh, we don't put a lot of effort into internationalizing our databases. These are just small academic databases. If you somehow end up working on a project that needs a particular character encoding, you can go ahead and set it. Um, do we want to index this? Yeah, I'm going to index it with index because you can imagine searching by name through this database or through this database table. I don't need any comments. Um, you can set a collation for the entire table. You would think that if you set the collation for the whole table, then each column would get set correctly. That doesn't always seem to happen, so I end up having to set this in like 50,000 different places. Interestingly, if you don't pick a collation, it defaults to Swedish. Um, which includes pretty much the whole Latin alphabet, but also some extra characters. Um, I think that's because one of the original MySQL developers was from Sweden. Um, and then this is a little tricky. If I click Go, it'll try to add another column, so it'll reload this interface with another column. What I want to click here is Save. And so you can see there's Passengers. Now if I hit Browse, this isn't actually lit up. 
um, because there's no, there's no rows in there yet. If I hit structure, we can sort of see the structure of what we just did. And if we need to change something, uh, maybe we decide that 255 characters is too much. We actually only want 250 characters. I can come in here and change that and then save it. So, you know, fantastic. We've got this here. Now we can insert some people. Um, and interestingly, we don't have to list the ID. I can just say, I think we decided Spider-Man wants to fly. And um, I don't want to ignore this one because I'm going to, who else wants to fly? How about Superman? Um, and uh, let's, let's insert those. Good. Now let's insert a few more. Uh, how about uh, Wonder Woman and uh, other superheroes? Um, um, I can't think of any superheroes. Iron Man? Good. Great. So, you know, we've, we've added a bunch of members of the DC and Marvel's superhero cinematic universe. If we hit browse, we can now see them in here. Um, Oh, interestingly, it looks like it's sorting alphabetically by this column, but with ID, but you know, not necessarily in order of the ID. Um, and this database administration tool, PHP My Admin, there's a lot of really cool features. I can click ID to sort by ID, sort by ID descending. You know, I can sort of view the information all these different ways. And if I want to edit a particular row, maybe I've decided Iron Man should be one word. I can hit Edit, and this should be you know Iron Man. And then, bam, I've now edited the data. So um, I don't spend a lot of time on the insert and create table and alter table syntax because these days just use a database administration tool for a lot of that stuff. Now, in terms of like writing select statements and to some extent insert and update statements when we actually write code that's going to change a, uh, a database uh, when you start building your web application, um, you know, then you do need to sort of worry about those, but you can always look up the um, syntax. Now, another cool note, um, we just sort of did an update. If you, if you look up here after you run any commands, it'll actually print out the, the, the SQL um, statement of the command that was just uh, executed. So it's kind of nice. So we've got to add another table. We want to add our flights table. So we go back up here, uh, localhost, in here to air travel. Uh, we're going to create a table called flights, and what do we need? A, f a primary key, flight number, airline, uh, source, destination. What's that, like five? Maybe maybe six? Well, we'll start with five and see if that's enough. Perfect. Okay, so, oh, oh and now it's doing this lengthwise. So it's basically the same interface, but lengthwise. So we want flight ID, um... I don't think we actually need this to be an int now because flight IDs are always like three numbers. I think we can get away with making it a small int. You know, they're like flight 897, but you don't have, and, and you might have like flight 1054, but you don't have flight like 375,206. Um, wait, sorry, that would be for flight number, not for flight ID. How many different flights? Well, whatever. We'll make it a medium int. There can't be more than 16 million flights. Uh, flight number. Uh, this we can make a small int. Um, these can be, well, we don't need collations for them. These can both be unsigned because we're not going to have negative flight numbers. Uh, this is the primary key. This we should probably index because we might search on it. Um, this will be auto increment. Uh, what other stuff did we need to know? Oh, we need to know the source. This actually could just be an airport code, uh, which I think is like, I think they're all three characters, so I'll set it at three and we'll hope for the best. Source airport, destination airport, that can also be varchar. I'll also set that to three. Um, I had another column here, now I don't remember why. ID, flight number, source, oh, airline. Yeah, of course. And that's going to be uh, a varchar, and we'll make that, you know, I don't know, you know, well, maybe that, maybe, I don't know, 30. Hope that that's good. Uh, now, I guess these are string values. I'm going to see what happens if I don't set a collation on them. Um, we can always go in and add it in later because we know how to use this thing to edit things. And what if I set a collation for the whole table? Uh, let's go general. Okay, good. Save. Let's see what happens. Good. So we've got passengers. Let's look at our structure here. No, sorry. It wasn't. It didn't want to look at passengers. Flights. Let's look at the structure here. 
Uh, yeah, actually, look at that. General, yeah, look at that. Because we set it for the whole table, and it sort of has the right stuff here. So let's, uh, let's add a flight. So this will be flight number uh, 123, flying from Peoria to uh, Chicago O'Hare on Delta. And um, there'd be other information we could stick in here. We could add columns for like what time the flight leaves and when it arrives and all this other stuff. But for now, you know, who cares? Um, and then flight 234, leaving um, Moline and arriving at, uh, I don't know, LAX. And this will be on American. Good. So we got those things added. Fantastic. And you can see... Here's the, uh, uh, up here, the insert stuff. This is the SQL that got generated. It's also showing it down here. Now if we go here to Browse, we see, fantastic, we've got a couple flights. Now there was one other table that we needed. Go back up here to Air Travel. Uh, this is going to be Passengers uh, on Flights. Maybe I'll call this Bookings. And so we know we need the flight ID, the passenger ID, and we might actually have other information about a passenger being booked on a flight. Number of bags that are checked, seat assignment. I'll, I'll put four columns in so that we can kind of see what's going on here. So, uh, and I'm going to show you how to make a compound or composite primary key. Um, this is going to be the passenger ID. This is going to be the flight ID. Now, uh, I'll make both of these, I guess, int, um, so that they'll match. Now, what's sort of interesting is, as long as this is some integer type, uh, we're using these as basically both primary and foreign keys. This is a foreign key that points to the bookings table, uh, sorry, to the um, passengers table. Uh, this might be int, and the other one might be medium int or something. As long as they're both sort of ints, it'll, it'll match them up fine, uh, as long as there's some kind of numeric value. And in fact, in, my, in, in, in SQL, even if one of them is a string and another one's an integer, the database can like figure out that those are the same thing and compare them as long as the string is always like a string of digits. It's only when uh, the string has letters in it and the, you know, the integer obviously doesn't that it's always going to come back that they're not the same. Uh, attributes, these can both be unsigned. Do we want to index them? Watch this. I'm going to set both of these as primary. Let's see if that works. Um, Actually, well, yeah, we'll do that. Um, and then I'll show you how to change keys later. So now what do we want to have? Uh, checked bags, num bags. Um, we probably don't need up to four, four billion ba uh, bags. This can probably be a tiny int. And uh, what else did we want to know? Oh, seat. And I think seats probably can just be strings, a varchar. Um, how big does this need to be? I don't know. 47F. It's probably just three characters, but to be safe, I'll make it six so we have some extra space. Collation on this. Let's go UTF-8 General CI. Fan flippin' tastic. Um, I want to set these both to unsigned. Uh, this tiny in for number of bags also can be unsigned. Um, Oh, and oh, and these don't need to be auto increment because that wouldn't really make any sense. Okay, perfect. Let's uh, let's see if this works. Good. Okay, now let's go look at the structure of bookings and see what we have. Yeah, check this out. This is a compound primary key. Um, key name is primary, um, but the column is actually both of these columns. Now, uh, if you forget to create a primary key, let me show you how to do it. So first, I'm going to drop this. And so now we don't have any primary key at all. I'm going to say create an index on, you know, two columns. And so the index type, I want it to be primary. You can, other than the primary key, which needs to be named primary, you can actually, like, name your indexes. I don't know why you would ever need to do that, so I never, I never do. Um, I shouldn't say I don't know why. I mean, for, like, large, complicated database systems, naming of the indexes might be important. But, you know, for what we're doing, it's not really going to matter. Um, and so now I'm saying, let me create the primary key. I said it was two columns, so I can go in and say passenger ID, flight ID. If you forgot to make a primary key on a table, um, you can do the same thing, but instead of adding it on two columns, make it on one column if it only needs one, for example. 
Size, um, if you leave it blank, it means use the whole thing. Size is useful. Uh, sometimes you might only need the first some number of characters or first some number of digits to uniquely identify every row. Uh, that's a little bit risky when we're using passenger ID and flight ID. It, it probably won't work. So as a general rule, like unless, unless you can articulate a very clear reason why you should put a number here, leave it blank. So, and this will get us back to where we were before. We've got this, uh, this primary key. So now we can go ahead and add stuff in here. Watch this. Passenger 76 is booked on flight 99 uh, with one, you know, two bags and a seat assignment of 4F. Um, now, I, I shouldn't be able to do this because passenger 76 doesn't exist. Flight ID 99 doesn't exist. Let's, let's do, do this, though, see if it works. Yeah, it totally works, right? Because the database has no idea right now that these are foreign keys that point to these other tables. There's things we can do to make those be foreign keys that point to the other table, uh, but we're not actually going to bother. Um, we're just going to write all of our code as if they're primary keys uh, that, are, that are being used, as if they're foreign keys that are pointing to the primary keys of other tables. As long as we do that, everything will just work uh, fine. Um, but, you know, do keep in mind that if you're not careful, you can put data into the database that doesn't actually make any sense. So I'll go ahead and delete this row because that row didn't really make any sense. Cool. So uh, there, there we have it. We've got bookings. We've got flights. We've got passengers. The bookings are uh, relating flights to passengers uh, and also passengers to flights because each flight can have many passengers. Each passenger could be booked on many flights. Um, well, that's, uh, that's basically what we've got for database administration, database manipulation. This tool, once again, PHP My Admin. Uh, it's a really, really good database administration tool. We'll use it for a lot of our database work this term for getting the schema and structure set up. Um, you will need to write your um, own SQL statements for doing the selects, possibly a little bit for doing inserts uh, as we do some of our uh, uh, data work, data crawling, things like that. But uh, if you if you need to go in and make changes to your database and stuff like that, don't don't do it from the command line. Just go ahead and use one of uh, you know this web-based administration tool. It's going to save you a lot of time uh, and hassle. And you know this is kind of an industry standard tool. A lot of people use PHP MyAdmin when they're uh, working with the MySQL database. Um, cool. I think that's what we've got. Okay. Well, thanks for listening.